Praise the Lord. You know, today we're talking about the miracle working power of God. The Bible declares in Hebrews 13 and 8, it's one of my favorite scriptures for the last many years, Jesus Christ the same, yesterday, today, and forever. I'm going to read that again because I want that to sink in to our hearts and lives today as we're uh, hearing this message. Uh, Jesus Christ the same, yesterday, today, and forever. His saving power, His healing power, and yes, His miracle working power is just as real today as it was 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the shores of Galilee. How many would say amen to that amen. this morning? Amen. amen. So we serve a miracle working God. You say, well, Pastor Mike, today I think I'm glad I tuned into this telecast because I need a miracle in my body or I need a miracle on the job or with my family or in school, whatever it is. Well, I'm telling you today that the Lord is more than able. He's willing to reach out and touch your heart today and bring you the miracle that you're looking for even before this telecast is over, before this service is over today. We're going to believe and we're going to pray a little bit later for the miracles to touch your life as well as my life. And I praise the Lord. So we can depend on the fact, although all the problems in the world today, all of the challenges and all the, the situations of the day could be disturbing when we hear them on the news and other people talking. It could be disturbing. But we that know the Lord today, how many will say amen to that? We that know the Lord today, we realize that God's power is greater than all of these problems put together. Amen. amen. Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can do anything. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing, the Bible says, with God all things are possible. And I believe that with all of my heart. We've seen that in our ministry as we've traveled the nations of the world the last 40 years. We've seen God do the miracles of every kind imaginable because he's God and he has no limit, no limitation at all. You know, sometimes we limit God because we need to be reminded at times, we have to be reminded who God is and that the Lord is with us here today. Amen. Remember, he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. There's nothing too hard for the Lord, nothing too difficult for him today. How many believe that? There's nothing in this room here today. There's nothing too hard with God. You say, well, Pastor, I'm going through a lot of problems and situations. Yes, but the Lord is watching all of that. Amen. He knows about that. And I heard a very famous evangelist years ago said that once we're born again, once we're being led by the God's Spirit, that whatever happens, God's allowing it. He's under. He's in control. And even the enemy, the devil, can only go so far and God can say no farther. Amen. So we know that we're in good hands today. We're in wonderful, powerful hands. The same hands that created this universe. The same hands of our Lord Jesus Christ that reached out and touched the multitudes and was moved with compassion uh, as he was in his earthly ministry. You know, the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ was one of continual miracles of every kind imaginable, every situation. He walked on water. He rose the dead. He caused the blinded eyes to open, the cripples to walk, the deaf to hear. He could do anything. He fed the 5,000. We heard about that today. He fed the 5,000 with the, uh, the loaves and fishes. Nothing too hard for the Lord Jesus Christ today. And so we know that God's power is very, very real. Yeah. We can depend on it. We can depend on God's power through the situations that we're confronted with, that we're faced with today. There's nothing absolutely too, nothing too hard for God. The Bible declares in Matthew 4, 23, that Jesus went about all of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and this is what I like, and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. He went about... He was directed by the Father. Jesus, you know that every place Jesus went, everything he did, everything he said was directed by the Father. He said that. Although those things that the Father shows, uh, shows me, these are the things that, are, that I know are, are directed to, totally by him. So we're thankful for that today. We're thankful for the situation. So Jesus went about all of Galilee, let's read it again, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, 
and healing every manner of sickness and every manner of disease among the people. So we can see that the strength, the power, and the unlimited capacity of our Lord Jesus Christ to reach out and touch you and heal you and strengthen you today. And so he went about teaching, he went about preaching, and he went about healing, and the Bible declares that he even healed all manner of sickness, all manner of disease among the people. If you're watching today and you have a, a need in your physical body, you need divine healing today, the Lord could do it. Yeah. We've seen God do miracles on the platforms of the world. We've held our crusades and our conferences for, throughout the years. Here at home as well. God is a miracle worker. I wouldn't uh, dare get up and try to preach on something if I didn't know the Lord was with me. And I didn't, if I didn't feel the anointing power of the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't have the courage to get up there and tell thousands of people in one service that Jesus is going to save you today. He's going to heal your body. He's going to do a miracle in in your life he's going to fill you with his power i wouldn't be able to say that if i had did not have the full confidence that i have in the lord jesus christ how many will say amen to that today yeah, yeah, so we see that the lord operated in the supernatural all through his earthly ministry in fact i heard one minister say one time that when jesus showed up on the scene miracles became the order of the day <laughs> i love that and we've seen that so true in today. Can God still heal today? Does he still move, do miracles today? Absolutely he can. He doesn't change. He said he's God. He says, I change, I change not. In uh, Acts 10, uh, 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and, and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. Him. So we know that the Lord Jesus depended like we do upon the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As he went about, he was filled with the Spirit of God. He went about healing those that were oppressed by the devil and gone because the fact was that the Father was with him. You know, God is with us today. We can pray those kind of prayers, I believe. We're going to talk about that a little while. That the Lord has transferred his anointing power to the church, to the body of Christ, yes, in the 21st century. The names and faces are changed from the 1st century to the 21st century, but God's power and ability is just as real today as it was when Jesus was here on the earth. So today, we're, we're going to be working those works that the Lord talked about. So it was the anointing. The Lord Jesus himself was anointed uh, and uh, with the Holy Spirit, with power, and he went about doing good deeds. He went about healing the, the people from every kind of uh, malady known to man, every kind of disease. And he brought comfort, and he brought strength, and he brought healing uh, into the lives of those that he come in, came into contact with. That's why I'm glad that we can have a service like this. That's why we're designated today as a day of miracles. Because God is a miracle worker. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing impossible with Him. If He created this universe, don't you think He can reach out and touch your life today? He can change the circumstances. He can open those doors of opportunity. Some of you maybe have a big business projects going, major projects. You know, God can open that door. God can give you favor with man. When you have favor with God, God gives you favor with man. As, and God can open a door, the Bible declares, that no man can close. We can depend on that today. Yeah. We're depending on him. You have a, a, you're a business person. You're watching today. You love the Lord. God will make your business very successful. We've heard so many testimonies how God has transformed people's lives done all kinds of miracles imaginable on a, on a daily basis because God is willing and the Lord is able to do all those things today. We praise the Lord for that. One of the great messages that I love through the years in my ministry, one of the main things that God has grant, granted us many years ago, and I asked him for, this Paul declares, ask for the best gift. That means the best gift that's for you. I was fascinated for many years with the ability and the giftings of divine healing and miracle healing of the power of God. And I coveted that uh, ministry as I saw others who were very well-known evangelists. 
I watched their lives, I read their biographies, I tried to meet them personally, spend time and talk to them about how they, God was able to use them in the area of the supernatural. And you know, they were very gracious. They took a young man, at that time I was a young preacher, wanting to learn, very eager, and especially about signs, wonders, and miracles. And they were kind enough to teach me and tell me what, and show me what to do. And the Lord, of course, through the Holy Spirit, gave me the main direction. Well, Pastor Mike, did God use you in the healing ministry? Yes, he has over 40 years now. I can say that he granted me that gift that I desired so much because I wanted to help people. I wanted to, to reach out and touch them. And I read the life of Jesus, of course, and the life of the other apostles, how God used them as, uh, later on in their ministries in signs, wonders, and miracles. And I, I coveted that gift so bad on the inside as I would stand as close as I could on these platforms where the miracles and the healings were taking place and I was the guy standing on the side watching and then one day God began to use me in that ministry as well. The first uh, miracle service we held was in the Philippines many years ago and the first miracle that took place in my ministry was the healing of a little blind girl, five years old, completely blind. People knew her in the town. And we prayed, and I prayed in the name of Jesus, and her sight was restored. It set a record in that, in that town. It caused a revival to break forth. And that was the first test that the Lord gave me is I, 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 you know, God will test us and we really are serious and mean business with God and want to be used of God. And I know we have some ministers out there, people that are maybe thinking about going into the ministry. Let me encourage you here today. If you have that desire, God can open that door. If you, if you want to start a ministry, God can help you to do it. He did, he did with us. If you want to operate in these wonderful gifts of the Holy Spirit, God can make that available to you if you really want it that bad. Well, I wanted it that bad. And I tell you, I wasn't sure if God was going to use me in that regard to divine healing until that moment, until that moment on that platform in that other country as I kneeled and prayed for that little girl. And she said to her mom, Mommy, I can see. After that, that changed my whole ministry. That changed my whole life. As far as my confidence in God, the confidence in the fact that he had definitely called me uh, to more of an evangelistic type ministry, reaching out to other nations besides our own and operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the great uh, examples that I love, and I've preached it many times overseas, is the healing of blind Bartimaeus found in Mark chapter 10, verse 46. We, we realize the significance. Now, remember that every place Jesus went, everything he said, and everything he did was for a divine purpose. He didn't just happen to show up at a place. He was being directed by the Father. He, his direction. You know, the steps, the Bible says, the steps of a righteous person are ordered by God. So we wouldn't it be great to be like the Jesus in the regard that we're walking not only in the Spirit, but in the direction that God gives us that we'll be at the right place at the right time with the right people, with the right message, <laughs> with the right ability and the giftings of the Spirit to take care of the situation. Yes. Well, God can make that able for us. He he's makes that availability happen and that you don't just happen to show up God sent you there. You feel directed. Well, you know, I feel this morning, I need to go to do this. I need to go to that church today. I need to speak this message today. And even in preparation, asking God, Lord, what shall I preach? It's my turn. And we have wonderful other ministers in our church here that are tremendous preachers. So what, what shall I preach on, Lord? Well, he told me, to pray, preach on miracles. So, okay, all right. <laughs> I just follow along with what he told me to do. And here this morning, during Sunday school they're talking about the same thing so you see God confirms his word and then the Bible says he'll even hasten to perform it can you imagine that so if you need a miracle today you just hang on there because God has a miracle for you now we're talking about blind Bartimaeus from Mark chapter 10 they came to Jericho and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples a great number of people uh, with a great number of people blind Bartimaeus the son of Timaeus sat by the highway side begging. Now here he is in a helpless, helpless situation, sitting outside begging, totally blind. But this day, 
was going to be different for him. This was his breakthrough day. This was his day of miracles. This was a day of encountering with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. This was his day to personally meet the Lord. And it was the Lord ready to meet his problem and his situation and his blindness. Some of you might be watching today. You wonder, do you think the Lord can meet me? So I'm going through something right now, Pastor Mike. Can God be? Oh, he's, he's right there with you already. That's why you're watching the program today. That's why you're listening to this message. He's directing you to be here at this moment to hear this message so that the Lord who is with you there by his spirit can reach out and touch you and bring you the miracle you're needing so badly. How many will say amen to that today? Amen. So Jesus went on his journey. They came to Jericho he had with his disciples, great number of people following along, of course, blind Bartimaeus, there he is, sitting by the highway side begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. And he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. There was a recognition in his life who Jesus was. Isn't that interesting? Here he's a blind man, but undoubtedly he heard the stories of the ministry of the Lord Jesus already. That had already built faith because of the character of the Lord Jesus, his reputation, and the miracle stories that others shared, I'm sure, with him, and that he heard about the miracle working power of our Lord. Amen. And so when Jesus was passing by and he couldn't see, but he could hear, amen, he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, recognition who the Lord was, have mercy on me. Many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Again, thou son of David, recognition who he was, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. Let me tell you something today. You cry out to the Lord today, and you're going to get his attention. Some people said, Pastor Mike, do you think the Lord really listens to me when I pray? Of course he does. Does he really know what I'm going through? Can I really get his attention? Yes, you can. How do you get his attention? By prayer and by calling out to him in faith. You know, the Lord responds to faith. He's there for for the, the, the purpose of bringing healing and blessing and comfort and peace to the lives of people. Even the day in Matthew uh, chapter 9 where he looked upon the, the multitudes and was moved with compassion, he knew their situation. He knows your situation and mine here today in our, in our chapel. God knows what we're needing and what we're going through today, just like he did blind Bartimaeus. But there were those who try to stop him. They try to quiet him down. You know, don't get too excited now. Don't get, now don't become a fanatic now about the Lord. And you know, but you know what he did? He cried the louder. <laughs> Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible declares that Jesus stood still. Oh, I love that. He had his full attention at that point. Jesus glanced at him and knew already his condition. I believe our Lord knew all about that, that man uh, blind Bartimaeus sitting there that day. I believe that he came there for that purpose, for, for the purpose of bringing healing and blessing to the people. But I think he knew about that man today. He knows about our hearts today. He knows our situations. We think, does the Lord care? Does he know? Does he recognize what I'm going through? The answer is yes and all. He knows it completely from the beginning to the end. He created us. He knows all about our life. You know, the Bible says he knows our frame. In other words, our physiology. We're just human. He knows us. But he, but he loves us so much. He wants to work with us. He wants to work in and through us. That's what's so exciting to me. Not only receiving the miracle, but also praying for others to have a miracle too. Amen. That's exciting. And see God operate. See God open the blinded eyes, cause the cripples to walk. We had one young man that was brought by a medical doctor, his medical doctor in a cot because he'd been paralyzed through an automobile accident. And all we did was pray over the crowd. And I hear this shouting way in the back. This hallelujah, praise the Lord. And I was on the platform and I told the ushers, please bring that person up. Because this, I see this young man standing, jumping up and down, brought him, found out that he had been brought by his doctor in a cot paralyzed. And during the prayer over the crowd, he was healed. And he got up and ran with me on the platform back and forth. 
That was another confirmation for me that God, His miracle working power is the same today as it ever was. Amen. It caused a stir, not only in, in the lives of the people in that town, but it caused a stir inside of me as a preacher of the gospel. That the Lord, we got His attention. Jesus stood still. And He commanded him, commanded Bartimaeus to be called. They called the blind man, said unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he's calling you. Can you imagine how he must have felt at that moment to know that the Lord Jesus Christ was personally calling him to approach him to come to him? We can call on the Lord 24-7. We're not going to go through 10 secretaries that say, I'm sorry, he can't see you right now. We can call on the Lord day and night. How many know he'll answer your prayer? How many know he knows all about it? The Bible says even before we call on him, he begins to answer. Can you imagine that? Because he knows us, but he likes us to call on him. He likes to know that we are trusting him today, that we're relying upon him and his power, and we're trusting and believing his word. We heard earlier today, all we have to do is follow his word. That's right. Just follow what he tells us. Follow the instructions. Amen. When everything else fails, follow the instructions. <laughs> Amen. And he'll show you what to do. Imagine the comfort when they, the, the others told him, you don't have to worry. He's calling you. He's calling you. So he, he's calling you. And he, and he cast away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. Jesus answered and said to him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, your faith, thy faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Thoughts about this. Son of David. Bartimaeus calls Jesus the son of David. This title only appears here in Mark. It clearly is a royal title as part of the lineage of King David and in later chapters he discover, we discover that the importance of this public declaration. Jesus stood still. He heard Brian Bartimaeus call him by his royal name, thy son of David. Isn't that interesting? He recognized the royalty of our Lord Jesus Christ, the lineage of whom the Messiah would come. He stopped and, and uh, he commanded that they bring Bartimaeus to him. Casting away his garment. In that, I understand that in the Middle Eastern, when a person, in the Middle East in those days, when a person was blind, they wore a certain garment which de denoted their blindness. Like a blind person today has those walking canes, the red and white walking canes. Well, in those days, they wore a cloak. And so the Bible says that when Jesus called blind Bartimaeus to him, he right away, he cast away his garment his cloak representing blindness and poverty. Isn't that interesting? He casts it away as he approaches the Lord. Now, I would say that's tremendous faith. That's an absolute confidence that he's going to get his miracle that day. Remember, that was the day of miracles for Bartimaeus. That was his day of breakthrough. That was his day of transformation. That his life from that moment on, one encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ was all it took changes his whole life for the rest of his life. One encounter will change everything in your life. And the, the Lord asked him, what do you want? You know, the Lord wants us to call on him and tell him. He already knows. He knows already the man's blind, but he wants him to say it. Lord, uh, what would you like me to do? I want you to receive. I want to receive my sight. Lord, pray for me. I want to receive my sight. Jesus saw Bartimaeus' heart that he truly desired mercy and healing. And more importantly, when he received his miracle, what did he do? He continued following the Lord. Amen. You know, when we get our miracle here today, when we're going to pray in a few minutes, let's not forget what the Lord has done for us. When we get our miracle, we should tell other people about it. That's why when we have answers to prayer in our, our church here at World for Jesus, we like to hear the testimonies. That's only giving honor to God. We want to we want to share in what the miracle that you just had. We're so interested in knowing what the Lord did for you because it's encouraging to us. It encourages people to hear those miracle stories. 
It, 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 give, it builds faith in them. Well, maybe the Lord will do the same thing for me. Yeah. And he will, because you know why? God is no respecter of persons. He loves us. No matter our station in life, no matter the culture we came from, our background, our education, or lack of, the Lord is so big, it doesn't matter to him. What, he do, look, what does he look at? He looks at the heart, just like he looked at the heart of Bartimaeus. He was moved at Bartimaeus casting away. Even before he received his sight, he's already casting away the garment that denoted his, his, his blindness. Oh, I, I tell you, it's exciting when you talk about that. And so, and so he, and when he got his miracle, the Bible declares that he continued to follow Jesus. Who can, who can heal the blind according to Jewish faith? The Hebrew people understood that the coming Messiah, or Christ, would be identified as the one who could restore sight to the blind. That was one of the characteristics. Now, later in dawn, we, after Jesus uh, was getting ready to go back, being uh, crucified, resurrecting, going back to heaven, he prepared those disciples who were the eyewitnesses. Remember, they said, the early disciples later said, we are eyewitnesses of these things. They meant the miracles. They saw Jesus do the miracles, the healing, healings on, on the hillsides, the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. They, they saw him walking on the water. They saw him commanding the storms to be stilled, and they're obeying his voice. They saw him raising the dead. They saw, they heard him speak in a manner that it was a man from another world. They had never heard anyone speak with the power and the authority and the confidence that the Lord Jesus operated in. They were fascinated. They were amazed by the way he, he ministered. It, it was so compelling, they couldn't resist it. They had to continue listening and hearing what he had to say. So wonderful. And so later on, in John 6, 28, when Jesus was getting ready to go back to heaven, he was preparing them to carry on, the early disciples, the apostles, to carry on the ministry that he began. Not only the ministry of teaching and preaching, but also the, meaning, the miracles and the healing were included as well. Amen? That included everything that God wanted to do. And then the question came to Jesus, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Well, that's the question. I, I, I ask that question too. Lord, I would like, I see other evangelists operating in these wonderful gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to operate in that too, according to 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. I'd like to operate in those gifts as well. And how many know God heard that? <laughs> God heard that. He heard that prayer. Just like he read the heart of blind Bartimaeus. He reads your heart today. He was immediately healed. What, and then the question was later would arise, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? The answer lies in the next verse in John 6, 29. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. It's so simple. If we'll believe God, God can do the impossible in our life. If we believe God, God can bring us the marvelous salvation from darkness into light. And to be our names written in glory. So that one day we'll spend eternity with him. Uh, he can do that. And he can also bring the miracle of healing into your body. And to your life. Uh, every single time. If we'll just believe that God has sent us. That belief will bring us those things that we need. And so Jesus answered and said. This is the work of God. This is how it's done. By simply believing whom he has sent. If you believe him today, he'll give you the miracle you're looking for. When we believe in the Lord and his power, we can work his works, which include healing and miracles. Remember, in John 14, 12, he later told the disciples, he that believes on me, there's that word again, believe. He, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. And there's another promise Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. What a guarantee. What more could the Lord tell us? What greater promises could he bring than that here today? We're going to pray right now, not only for those in chapel, but for those of you that are viewing by way of television. I trust that this message has touched your heart. 
that has reached out uh, from these airwaves and touched you right where you're at. Father, we thank you for your word today. We serve a miracle working God of whom all things are possible. Lord, bless our people today. Bless our friends viewing by way of television. Lord, reach out, bring salvation, bring healing and the miraculous. If somebody needs a miracle in their body and they need a miracle in their life in some manner, whether it's on the job, in school, family members, their physical problem, whatever it may be today, a financial situation, Lord, bring them the miracle that they need right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch them in their physical body. Bring healing right now. Fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Increase them. Open doors of opportunity for them today. And those pastors that are viewing, Lord, by way of television, encourage their hearts today. We know the challenges of ministry are great, but God is still greater than every challenge we'll ever face. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, reach out and touch our people bless them bring healing we pray in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody said amen, amen. I heard it before I close I heard an old time preacher say over 50 years ago he says you know the vision is great and sometimes it can be overwhelming when God gives you a vision but remember one thing no matter what God is still bigger than the vision praise amen. the Lord amen. next time God bless you real good